Robert Downey Jr. is an enabler of violent men. Trash! Everyone loves a redemption story, right? But usually it's only white men who get it. And it's usually the worst men. I don't have anything against Robert Downey Jr. I don't know him. I don't care about him. But I talk about his story because it is a classic example of men, of, of, of society giving men endless second chances, third chances, opportunities to rebrand. And the men that get to rebrand are usually violent towards women. If it was just addiction, I would have more empathy. I have struggled with my own addiction. I have loved addicts. I know a lot about this topic, right? But the people who usually enable these men in terms of like being their, uh, what is what did he call it? My emotional support an uh, animal. Right, that's what he called. Like the way he talks about his wife makes me want to... <clears throat> way no oh god this man is so exhausting this man is so exhausting and you know what i would you know there's always that one person who wants to be the loudest in the room and get all the attention that's like why he's a performer and it makes sense but it sounds like this dude is like that in real life and again i'd be okay with that you always need someone to be the clown the entertainer but the thing that drives me crazy is he got his second 15th chances on the backs of women. He enables super racist men, super violent men. And is like, I'm, I'm here for you. I'll help you. Now, Robert Downey Jr. doesn't have, to my knowledge, any DV charges or history. No one that I know of has talked about it. But anybody who's ever been married to an addict or lived in a home with an addict knows it is awful. But it's also, you know, an illness, okay? But the thing that drives me crazy is that he is here to resuscitate men who have any problems. Army Hammer. Army Hammer. That man who saved him? Robert Downey Jr. Mel Gibson? Uh, Sandra Bullock's ex? Like, like Robert Downey Jr. even wanted to say, tried to save that man. Vouches for that man. And Robert Downey Jr. soft launches these men who get to rebrand regardless of what they do. If it was just about addiction, I'd be like, yay, everybody loves, uh, you know, as again, I have my own recovery story. You know, I almost died for my own self-destruction. I get, I have endless empathy, but what I, why I talk about this so much, which is why, again, Matthew Perry, the, the, the best thing that man ever did was not have children and not marry someone. Like, whew! He, he, by not doing the things that he claimed he wanted was a family. He just wanted a family. He just wanted a wife. Men who are, who are addicts and completely out of their mind and so self-absorbed in their own self-annihilation but want to bring people down with it, those men don't deserve wives. They don't deserve children. They can't even take care of themselves. And these men who literally, like Robert Downey Jr. literally talks about himself like he is a child and that his wife is a mother to him. And it's so gross. And I'm going to show you examples of that in a bit. I want to start off by why I can't stand this man. This was in Vanity Fair. Robert Downey Jr. has supported Army, <laughs> Army Hammer through crisis. When he found himself in the middle of shocking allegations of emotional abuse, manipulation, and violence, it was Robert Downey Jr. who stepped in to steer the actor towards rehab. You cannot rehab that, okay? L read Lundy Br Bancroft. Do any, like, literally. I'm sorry, but, like, um, alcoholism does not make you want to eat people. Like, oh, yeah, make yourself comfortable. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> Now, lots of people talk about Army, Army Hammer's ongoing substance abuse issues and his unresolved trauma. Aww! He has unresolved trauma? What woman doesn't from men, okay? But you know what we don't do is try to eat men. Like, I am, I am, I, I mean, y'all, I care about men and their mental health. I do. I literally have given so much of my time and energy and research to trying to help men help themselves. But what, what my page is about is women not helping these men. Stop helping these men. Because guess what? Robert Downey Jr. is going to save them anyway. 
These men have to get help themselves. And they actually avoid getting help by their enablers. With every addict, there is always an enabler who actually loves him to death or loves them to death, whatever the gender is. But the dynamics of patriarchy within addiction make this, it is not the same when you have a woman who's an alcoholic and a man who's an alcoholic. Because guess who just out of the gate is supposed to love and nourish and pour into and do all the emotional and domestic and schmegual labor to these men. Guess who is going to be unalived by the drunk man? So again, it is not the same. And I am so tired of these men. I'm glad they're acknowledging their unresolved trauma. But that does not excuse want trying talking about eating women and abusing women. Like, again, if I promise you, if any man had been through all the stuff that me and lots of people I know, lots of women I know at the hands of men, I can't even imagine what, what y'all would do. Because patriarchy has taught you that violence is the solution for like everything. That you're entitled to someone fixing this for you. A woman, usually. But like, we don't get that grace. When we have been, when we're survivors of Inchmest or, and all the things, we have daddy issues. It's joked about. Y'all don't care about our mental health. You never have. That's why we don't care about yours anymore. Like we care, but it literally kills us to care about y'all and your recovery. It kills us. John Mulaney's ex, Shmooicidal. That man pushed her to the brink of unaliving herself. But he's thriving now. The man who said he never wanted a child. Now he gets to be a, a sober, amazing dad with a career just reaching new heights. But the woman who poured into him all that time through all that addiction. Not only should, like, she's coming out with a book, by the way. I think you can pre-order now. I think it comes out in August. I can't wait to read that book. And honestly, I think that man did her a favor. Because seriously, I, I bet she is actually doing so much better now. That this man isn't taking up so much space in her life. Which is again why I really want women to stop trying to save these men. It is our, we are taught to be martyrs. We are taught to, you know, uh, save the day. Be the go-to girl. Be like, it is somehow like we get, it, get, it gives us a sense of validation to be the person that like rehabs these men. And the thing is that these men don't actually respect it. They hate us. They hate the women who sacrifice themselves for them. Because we are a reminder of how much they suck. How, how bad they can be. We, are, we, are, we mirror the worst version of themselves. And they don't respect us for losing ourselves trying to help them. Because what do all, they all do? As soon as they get out of rehab or even while they're in rehab, they find another woman who's younger, who isn't, like, doesn't have autoimmune disease conditions or whatever you call it. Because these men will literally kill you. I am telling you, these men will kill you. If they never lay a hand on you, it is so stressful living with out of control addiction. And because women are groomed to be caretakers from the day we're born, we always lose with these men. And then we're discarded as soon as they start thriving. These men are gold diggers, y'all. Until proven otherwise, assume every single one of them is digging for your gold. Of course, that's why they call us gold diggers. If you don't believe me, there are like endless examples of this. John Hamm also. I don't want kids. I don't want to get married. I don't believe in that. This brilliant woman put up with this man's crap. And then as soon as he got out, oh, I want to deal with my trauma. I want to do over. And I don't want a woman who reminds me of me being an awful person to everyone in my life. So bye-bye. And now he's married. The man who doesn't believe in marriage. I've already done videos on this. Go watch those for a deeper dive. Once you have kids with these men, even if you hate their guts, you have to support them. Because of course, you don't want the father of your children to die or just be doing bad. And plus, there's like this part that you probably will always kind of love and care about this person. Even if they literally almost killed you. Well, Robert Downey Jr. paid for Army Hammers for six months of, of, of rehab for this man. This alleged abuser, alleged cannibal. Like, <laughs> And of course, his estranged wife is being supportive. And then he, uh, Robert Downey Jr. also let Hammer stay in his home, one of his homes, and then took him to like AA meetings. Here's the thing. These stars give 12 Steps the worst name. And Google will tell you in a second 
None of these people are supposed to be telling anyone that they're in AA. That is their ego entering themselves. In addition to paying for six months of rehab and providing a home for this man who literally, remember, only one of his teeny tiny problems is addiction. The reason this man got in trouble is because he was outed as an abuser. Allegedly an abuser. So it's not like he, 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 oh God. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, he's also been providing financial assistance until he gets back on his feet, according to the same source. Which is so funny because Army Hammer comes from an oil tycoon. Like, if you could just put like a monocle on this man and have a cigar, like, this man. When I did like a little bit of research on Army Hammer, I was like, oh my God, I don't care how nice that man made. This is before any of this stuff came out. I was like, just reading his family history? Like, I have no doubt in my mind that this man is abusive because there's no way he has done all the work on himself to be a good partner. When you, someone who comes from this much trauma, like, and then you add Hollywood to that? Hollywood will bring, will, Hollywood will amplify the worst parts of yourself or the best parts, but usually the worst part. And that's why getting famous is the worst thing that can happen to somebody who is self-destructive. Why do you think so many of them end up dead and or abusing other people? Hollywood literally chews people up and spits them out. And if they do not come from like a, like a loving, strong foundation or have done an enormous amount of work on themselves, they will probably be an abuser in Hollywood or be abused or be so self-destructive that they die or come close to it. Hollywood is literally, I would not wish fame upon anyone. And it's like every child's, not every child's, but children like dream of being famous and even like adults do. But honestly, the more successful I get, the more terrified I get because I don't ever want to be a part of this Hollywood machine. That's why I started off as a writer. I'm like, oh, this is, ooh. But having worked on a lot of sets and having met some of these stars in real life, some of them I'm like, oh, wow, you seem like a normal grounded person who's kind and respects the crew and whatever. Maybe you're trash. I don't know. And then I've worked with plenty of people where I'm like, you're a terrifying human being. <laughs> like, what is it exactly that Army Hammer, this man that Robert Downey Jr. has endless empathy for? Well... Uh, first of all, he was he was already dropped by his talent agency um, after several women took to social media to accuse the actor of emotional abuse, manipulation, and schmegual violence. I, I, but Hammer's denied it all. I don't know. I, that shocks me. But look who his lawyer is. <laughs> the guy he has retained is a lawyer for Prince Andrew. <laughs> well, Army Hammer has no current intentions of permanently returning to Los Angeles. Um, a comeback? May not be out of a possibility. Why? Well, he thinks of Robert Downey Jr. as as an example of how he may be able to come back. And apparently, Robert Downey Jr. just doesn't mind that. Is so. Would you want somebody who is who has so many allegations of like crazy schmegual assault and violence? Would you want them being like, I want to make a comeback like him? Well, bro, if you stop funding his life and, and soft launching his comeback, maybe someone like me would not have so little respect for you. Again, I love a story of somebody who works on themselves. I love the hero's journey. That's why I'm, I'm a storyteller. That's why we love movies. You know, you have Dark Knight of the Soul, you inciting incident, you know, bad guys moving in. That, literally, that is what stories are about. Everybody loves somebody who has like tried really hard and blah, 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 blah. But I, I, why, why, why Army Hammer? Why? Oh, right. Because no, none of these men in Hollywood give a crap about anything that, that men do to women. They like, they don't care. Seth Rogen, well, never forgive you, right? You're still buddies with Franco, bro. You can, you can smoke on your couch and be child free. And yeah, I commend you for not having children. Because guess what? Those, d would you want those kids going to your buddy Franco? Christopher Nolan, soft launching Casey Affleck's career. Gotta be putting him in his films. I have so many issues with Christopher Nolan. I've already made so many videos on him. But he's a genius, a genius. But you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. 
I guess he just assumes that it's totally normal for someone who is, you know, schmegsly violent to get a second chance and, and also like anti-Semitic and racist because Mel Gibson is the only reason why he has a career. And I'm going to go into that in a different video. And I've already talked about it before. But this man's allegiance to awful people, whether they're like helping him or he's helping them, like none of these men ever change. Just because they get sober doesn't mean that they actually are treating people, especially the women who their careers rely on, they don't treat them any differently. So why does this piss me off so much? Because Army Hammer has already, like, look at this nonsense. Army Hammer says Robert Downey Jr. overcame the woke mob of cancel culture. Any person who ever says woke mob uh, and cancel culture, it's, a, it's usually a white man who does this. And it's usually when they've been held accountable for something Oftentimes violence against women, but a lot of times it's something super problematic, racist, uh, homophobic, like any of the things, right? But the fact that they're called, oh, oh, is, is, be, is, is not eating women woke? Uh, I didn't realize that that's what woke people believe. I thought that that was what all people believe. I thought even the most conservative red state person is like, yeah, eating people is pro is not, not good. No, that's woke mob. <laughs> But okay, of all the people that deserve second chances, you want to give this, like, Robert Downey Jr. Pick somebody who is not this terrifying, who isn't born into a, a like, oil tycoon, and who is just dealing with addiction. How about that? Stop doing this! Hammer acknowledged that his career was likely over before mentioning Robert Downey Jr. in his interview, saying the veteran actor found redemption through a new path. Look at the way he talks about his own... I would say there's examples of people who went through really difficult times and experienced what uh, Joseph Campbell would call the, the hero's death. And the hero must die so the hero can be reborn. <laughs> You're not a hero, bro. You're a predator and abuser, allegedly. Allegedly. I want to know the hero's journey of the women that he talked about barbecuing. <laughs> I want their hero's journey. Not yours. And that, I feel, is what's missing in cancel culture woke mob business. The minute anyone, anyone does anything wrong, anything like, you know, abusing women, they're just thrown away. <laughs> There's no chance for rehabilitation. There's no chance for redemption. Someone makes a mistake and we throw them away like a broken disposable camera. I can't think of one example. The, uh, okay. Harvey Weinstein is in jail. Bill, oh, no, Bill, got, Bill, no, he had a, wait, R. Kelly, I don't know. It almost seems like they get endless chances because even Louis C.K., who admitted to schmegsly assaulting those women, selling out Madison Square Garden, uh, won a Grammy after all that. These men are doing fine. James Franco's doing fine. He, he's producing lots of things. He knows he can't show his face. But I guarantee you that man's going to have a comeback. Thanks to his buddy Seth. They were smart enough to take his producer credit off of the Pamela, uh, Pam and Tommy. Which I've already done a video about how unbelievably messed up that was. And that is why I will never forgive Seth Rogen. Franco was a producer on that. These men do not lose their career. But uh, they to dispose of a lack of broken camera. Shut up. Shut up. Ah. Hammer told the outlet, Robert and others are examples of what it looks like for humans to be to experience pain and growth at the expense of women. And that's something I aspire to do. Okay, but the difference, besides all the, like, besides what he did to Sarah Jessica Parker in terms of literally exhausting that woman. And then his first wife, who he cheated on and also exhausted. Like, these men literally are only alive and thriving because they exploit the women who love them. But, you know, what he did was, you know, driving under the influence, like doing some mess. That he had, you know, it was all ar around drugs and alcohol. He's never been, to my knowledge, accused of violence against women, which is the primary thing Hammer is being accused of. But let's worry about Hammer's pain. Not any of those women. We don't care about them. So what was it he did? He, he, just, he was talking about acts of cannibal, cannibalism, drinking blood, and he was accused of finger assault and said they had a four-year relationship. Two of his former partners also accused him. One said he wanted to break my ribs and barbecue and eat it. The other one said he used a knife to carve the letters A near her mama. 
Like, this is just a summary. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I guess the power dynamics were off. I never thought about fame and consent. Oopsies. But the woke mob culture is canceling me. Oh, but he experienced schmegdual abuse from a pastor at the age of 13. Cool, my, my essay started way earlier than that from a family member. But I don't want to eat people. Why do you, army? What he did for me was introduce schmegduality into my life in a way that was completely out of my control. Yeah, welcome to being a woman. I was powerless in the situation. I had no agency in the situation. My interest then went to, I want to have control in situation. Yeah, that sounds like uh, because a pastor did that to you, now uh, you are literally just a rapist. Like, it's just so funny to me how many women are survivors of childhood essay. And what we usually do, now I'm not saying that women do not uh, groom and, uh, and, and SA men. I actually care about that more than most men do. Because most men are like, wow, you were so lucky. Wow, I wish I'd lost my virginity at 14 to a 30-year-old woman. Like, that is so messed up. And feminism cares about that. But, 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 so, like, the people who are not taking men's SA seriously is men. It has always been men. I promise you, every time a man talks about his own abuse, especially in childhood, and if it's schmegdual abuse, first of all, they usually don't talk about it if it comes from a man. And if it's from a woman, they're like, the other men are like, bruh, I wish I could trade places. Y'all don't care. We care. We know that men who do not deal with their essay as children become rapists usually. Not always. Not if they get help. Or sometimes they end up becoming victims of something else later on. But almost every woman I know who experienced this as a child ends up trying to unalive herself. Usually. We usually put that violence inwards. And men, because of the way they're conditioned especially to you to be dominant and violent, we'll put that outward, okay? So I want men to get help because when men don't get help for this stuff especially, women always pay the price. Everyone pays the price. Like these men, especially if they have power and money, they literally just screw over everybody. But it's the women closest to them that will always pay the price or just women in general or, you know, girls. So I want men to get help. What I don't want is men like Robert Downey Jr. being like, yeah, just go to AA, bruh. You'll be fine. You can't rehabilitate this unless you work so hard on yourself. And most men don't want to. They're not willing to. It is very hard for men to get out of a cycle of violence uh, because it requires so much work, they don't want to do it. And sitting in an AA meeting is not going to address wanting to eat people, wanting to control and schmegdually dominate someone. Wanting to grape someone. Like, Robert Downey Jr. should have kept this quiet. I can't believe it. he's, like, not ashamed of this. Well, actually, I can. Because anybody who's like, Mel Gibson is my hero. Like, you have problems, bro. Then he talks about how he treated women. I led this really intense, extreme lifestyle. I'd swoop up women, bring them in. Into this whirlwind of travel and schmegs and drugs and big emotions. <laughs> That's an interesting word choice. Flying around. And then as soon as I was done, I just drop them off and move on to the next one. Wow, it sounds like, uh, so many men. Leaving the woman feeling abandoned and feel, oh, wow, wow, good for you. He has a little bit of self-awareness. Great. That is the <laughs> very bare minimum. But look at this. Oh, just like every narcissist, he attempted, he uh, contemplated unaliving himself due to the backlash of cancel culture and all these, oh, Silly women who are like, I don't know, we shouldn't platform a man who wants to SA us and eat us. But again, these men will always be like, but I was traumatized. I was traumatized. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. I don't know a single woman who is not traumatized schmegly by a man. It may be a little T or maybe like 200 big T's, but I don't know a single woman who hasn't been terrified of man schmegly and violated schmegly on some level or all of us have been coerced at some point. You will never convince me otherwise. Because lying, manipulating, guilt tripping, pretending to be stealthing, all of those are SA, brah. But Army Hannah had a pastor do that to him, and that justifies all of this. Oh, he was schmoodicidal. What woman isn't who's been through this? What woman hasn't? Right? Whether through addiction or just out like I've been told so many times that women with my backstory almost never make it and when I look back on all my own self-destruction I'm like dang I can't believe I'm alive 
But what I don't do is use all of this to justify harming other people. And the fact that he's doing this shows me he has no recovery at all. Because that is not what people who are really doing the hard work of addictions, that is not what you do. You do not blame this pastor for all of this that you did to women. You don't do that. So not only is Robert Downey Jr. Uh, enabling and letting Army Hammer rebrand and literally funding this. He's the first to jump in and console Sandra Bullock, the serial cheater who shamelessly was brandishing a uniform. And, and Robert Downey Jr. You know, has been called. Look, Robert Downey Jr. did what he does best. Be the mentor that everyone needs but no one deserves. Give me a break. Oh my God, shut up. Because what this Jesse guy did, this man who was like a nobody before he met Sandra Bullock, a man who, like, I, I, I know I've been promising y'all I'm going to do a video on this guy because their relationship is so perfect to explain what I say all the time. Never rehabilitate a man. Never date down. Never try to save a man. Never uh, have a, a relationship based on empathy or thinking they're cute, like adorable. The, uh, okay, okay, that's another video because that's exactly what Robert Downey Jr.'s wife said. Big red flag. But anyway, this man was a nobody. And then he screws over Sandra Bullock, right? Especially at, at her highest moment in her career problem. And then he gets to write a memoir trying to uh, tell the reason, the chaos that created all this. And it was Robert Downey Jr. who sent the Jesse James. Is that really his name? I hate that name because that is what my ex used to call himself because he wanted to be a terrible showbird. This is the most glorious storm ever. Don't worry, dude. You're going to be just fine. No, you're not. Like, your career will probably be fine because the industry will enable you. But you, my man, will probably continue to be a terrible person. Anyway, James has suffered an abusive childhood. Wow, that's so, so rare. Traumatizing parental relationship. Oh, so rare. Anybody raised by boomers could probably say that. Not all boomers, okay? A broken home? Wow. Who, who didn't? I, I mean, come on. And a difficult life marred by spectacularly bad choices that took away, away his ability to trust anyone. Oh, he has trust issues? Hmm. I wouldn't know what that's like. But somehow, he found himself trusting the words of Robert Downey Jr. in that particular moment. <laughs> like, this is so comically awful. But Robert Downey Jr. feels the need to save every broken soul. No, there are so many broken souls that need saving. What he does is he wants to save the broken souls who terrorize women. Again, if it was just him helping out addicts, that would be one thing. But he is at, he chooses to help men who've done terrible things to women. And by the way, in the next video, I'm going to show you how, how awful this man is to women. Robert Downey Jr. Like... You will not convince me that this man has not done some of his own stuff, given the things that he has said out loud with his own mouth. I'm like, oh my God, he is so problematic. But whatever, he gets a free pass because he was an addict. Like, one in 10 people are alcoholics. That's just alcohol. Like, come on. Robert Downey Jr. asked Mel Gibson, you know, the racist, misogynist, who, who literally has a thriving career still, somehow, but so somehow he got past the woke cancel cop. Blah, blah. I asked Mel to present him with this big award because when I couldn't get sober, he told me not to give up hope and he urged me to find my faith. Oh, God. Oh, you know who this reminds me of? What's that butt's name? Uh, Shia. Shia. Shia, who's now like an ordained priest or some crap. I've already done a video on that. These men will use AA and religion to rebrand themselves. And the reason why this pisses me off is because I'm not an AA. I never have been. But I know lots of people who have been. And lots of people do not change because they don't actually do the thing that they're supposed to do. But I know so many people who have used that or some other recovery program and it has literally changed them. It has changed their heart, their soul. They become a different person. And all these people who openly talk about this and are like, I'm, I, I'm religious. Oh, a, 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 like Brad Pitt, the abuser. Like I, any man who's like, I went to AA and now I'm doing great. Don't trust those men because they wouldn't need to talk about it if it actually was working. They wouldn't want to make themselves the poster child of a whole group of people who are struggling and be like, look at me. Look, I, 
I'm the spokesman, even though it literally goes against their traditions. Google it. It is available. Like, it is widely known they're not supposed to talk about it. But these people are like, yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm the exception, right? So Mel Gibson is the reason why Robert Downey Jr. has a career. He literally got him the job that relaunched him. And then a woman took, took over after that. But please, do not date these broken. They'll kill you.